on the old Milwaukee road, on the old Milwaukee road, traveling across the countryside. My, oh, my, what a wonderful ride when you hear that diner call, an invitation to you all. Wheels are clicking on the track, they'll take you there, bring you safely back on the old Milwaukee road, on the old Milwaukee road. For 70 years, loud rumbling filled the air surrounding this small remote location. It now sits in almost total silence. To the naked eye, there's nothing remarkable here today. An ordinary gravel road seemingly out in the middle of nowhere. Only the rocks and the quiet breeze remember its identity. This is where the final chapter of our story begins. My part of the story, however, began approximately 77 miles west of here in the small farming community of Lind, Washington. On a hot summer day in 2017, I was out exploring when something caught my attention. I've always been fascinated by relics of the past, and I just stumbled across a massive one. It was the remains of a bridge. Instantly, I wondered what happened to this bridge. Was this a train bridge? Why is it gone? How long has it been here? As soon as I had the chance, I knew I needed to answer those questions to satisfy my curiosity. It didn't take long. My search yielded a historic photo. It was labeled Lind Viaduct, and it was built by the Chicago, Milwaukee, and St. Paul Railroad. It dated back over 100 years, now I was even more curious to learn about this railroad I had just discovered. As it turned out, the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul and Pacific Railroad, or the Milwaukee Road as it was commonly referred to, was the last transcontinental railroad to be built crossing the United States. It began in Chicago and by 1909 it had made its way west clear into Washington State. It was abandoned in 1980 when I was only five years old. And with that, I had just found my next obsession that I would continue to chase for the next several years. Trains have always fascinated people, myself included. These giant machines have a way to capture the imagination like nothing else built by mankind. They've been part of our history and culture for over two centuries. They not only take us to amazing places, but they also help bring things to us. Countless stories of adventure and romance have centered around locomotives for generations. In 1905, a subsidiary of the Chicago, Milwaukee, and St. Paul Railway was chartered under the name Chicago, Milwaukee, and Puget Sound Railway Company. This new subsidiary was tasked with building what became known as the Pacific Coast Extension. This new extension would travel from the Missouri River all the way to Seattle and Tacoma. This was no easy task. This meant crossing several mountain ranges and included the building of countless bridges, tunnels, and trestles. When the dust had settled, the entire project had cost nearly $60 million, equivalent to $1.81 billion today. The railroad would accomplish this amazing feat in only three years between 1906 and 1909. The Pacific Coast Extension would operate for the next 70 years. Getting back to that remote intersection. History would remember this as a road, but not just any road, the Milwaukee Road. This is where the Milwaukee crossed the border from Idaho into Washington. Two lonely rows of trees still outline the right of way going into Idaho. It's been over 40 years since the last train came through here on March 17, 1980. 
The Milwaukee Road had gone bankrupt after years of mismanagement and a major decline in rail service. But that's another story in itself. Thanks to the efforts of a group of visionaries, the state of Washington was able to purchase most of the Milwaukee Road's right-of-way across the state. This foresight cannot be overlooked, as some of the most amazing and scenic land the Milwaukee traveled through is right here. This rails to trail had many names over the last four decades, including the Milwaukee Road Corridor, the Iron Horse Trail, the John Wayne Pioneer Trail, and as of 2018 was finally consolidated into the Palouse to Cascade State Park Trail. Now let's begin our journey west to see what's left of this amazing railroad. The small town of Tico, Washington has our first Milwaukee Road landmark, one that has stood tall well into the 21st century. The Tico Trestle, designated by the Milwaukee as Bridge EE-62, a massive 17-span trestle reaching 976 feet in length. Here we see just how this amazing trestle was constructed with the help of a machine called the Traveler, which would be used to build as it traveled along the completed trestle. Tico remains proud of its railroad heritage. In fact, Tico is the final stop for the John Wayne Pioneer Wagons and Riders, a group that travels the Palouse to Cascades Trail on horseback and covered wagons annually. Our next stop is the Seabury Bridge, designated EE-70A. What makes this bridge unique is the fact that it used to cross over another railroad whose remains can also be seen here. This is what is left of a section of the Spokane and Inland Empire Interurban, one of the local rail lines also now abandoned. Crossing under both is a local farm access road. It is the only one still used for its original purpose. In an area known as Pandora, we can see where there used to be a timber pile bridge now removed. An 
And here, we see a relic that harkens back to a time when steam engines ruled the rails. Concrete blocks that once supported a water tower. Here, as we approach the town of Rosalia, we pass through what used to be Tunnel 42, which was daylighted in 1911 due to frequent collapse. One of the most treasured historical landmarks on the Milwaukee Road, the Rosalia Arch Bridges EE90A and B. These twin arch bridges replaced the original timber trestle EE90 back in 1915. Once again, the Milwaukee traveled over the Spokane and Inland Empire interurban. and also over the Northern Pacific P&L branch. These majestic arch bridges were added to the National Registry of Historic Places in 1982. Faded Milwaukee Road marquees still cling to the sides of the bridge as a silent reminder of its past. Like Tico, the town of Rosalia also celebrates its railroad heritage. On our way to Malden, we find another bridge in the classic Milwaukee Road style. Bridge EE-108 crosses over Pine Creek just outside of town. The town of Malden was once bustling with activity, home to not only a depot, but a full-fledged rail yard with a roundhouse, a turntable, oil tanks, an ash pit, and many converging rails. Today, these grounds stand quiet and empty with only the half-buried skeletal remains of what once was. It's hard to imagine a time when trains came in and out of here on a regular basis. It's much like an archaeological site that has been lost to time. In September of 2020, the small communities of Malden and Pine City fell victim to a devastating wildfire. Both towns received heavy damage to several Milwaukee Road structures. Washington State Parks has plans to eventually make repairs to bridges that were burned. 
Fortunately, only the wooden planks were consumed by the fire. The steel and concrete framework was built to last. We're now entering one of the most beautiful and secluded areas on this journey. Here we cross Pine Creek once again over the curved bridge EE-122. At the west end, we get an unexpected surprise. Two Milwaukee Road boxcars left behind from a derailment long ago. An eastbound freight tore through here on a chilly February night in 1980, shortly before the line was abandoned. A rare film caught the aftermath and subsequent cleanup of the site here over 40 years ago. Car 13554 remains left behind, frozen in time on its side and teetering on the edge of the embankment, its logo and number still visible from beneath. Continuing to follow the right-of-way along Pine Creek, we come to the first of many tunnels still intact along the Milwaukee. The east portal of Tunnel 43 stands like the mouth of a mysterious cave. At a length of 756 feet, this is the only tunnel on this journey without a concrete portal to identify it. Emerging from the darkness, we get our first look at one of several Milwaukee remnants literally carved in stone. A grand entrance over 30 feet tall stands Tunnel 43, complete with the initials CM and PS, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Puget Sound. Next, we enter the quiet calm of Rock Lake. The picturesque and serene scenery we see here are the result of volcanic activity and ice age flooding carving out these magnificent cliffs. Rock Lake is home to several amazing Milwaukee Road features and some of the best engineering on the route. Following a short bridge perfectly balanced in the rocks, we're treated to the coupling of bridge EE-130 leading up to the eastern portal of Tunnel 44. A rare sight, original rail ties pressed into the ground between the two trestles. Not for the faint of heart, this trestle has the original cable rail and decking left behind, and it's a long way down. This would have been an amazing view for the fortunate folks lucky enough to be on passenger trains long ago. The eastern portal of Tunnel 44 is almost completely obscured. As nature has slowly reclaimed the land, it's difficult to imagine trains ever going through here. It feels like it's been much longer than just 40 years since the Milwaukee came rumbling through. On the other side of Tunnel 44, we are abruptly stopped. Falling rocks have completely obstructed the right-of-way. 
In the time of the Milwaukee Road, Rockfall was kept clear, and in fact, a unique remnant remains. A tall signal here once warned eastbound trains of falling rocks. This light went dark long ago and now stands silently among the trees. Today, the western portal of Tunnel 44 is surrounded by fallen rocks and boulders. Further west along Rock Lake is a timber trestle, EE-136, which also has original decking and is definitely showing its age. This one is isolated in a fairly remote location near a private property break in the trail, one of the few sections not owned by the state of Washington. Emerging from the lakeside, we cross Rock Lake Road where a trestle once connected the fill with an adjoining rock cliff. We begin our approach to the very small community of Ewan. The rock formations are abundant here as the Milwaukee winds its way through. Shortly past the missing bridge across Highway 23, the Milwaukee crosses over Rock Creek with another beautiful example of early 20th century engineering. Bridge EE-144 is a short two-span bridge with a center arch support. The landscape begins to change as we get closer to the Scablands. A large rock formation acts as a natural landmark in the area known as Castleton. This rock has been photographed as far back as 1936, seen in this now historic inspection tour by John W. Berger III. The area is much more desolate now. Trees have all but disappeared and the area becomes a wide open landscape where you can see for miles. From the rock at Castleton, we travel another 22 miles across some of the most remote and unforgiving parts of the trail, called the Scablands. Venturing this far out requires planning, appropriate gear, and plenty of drinking water. There is no civilization out here, let alone services. Next, we arrive in an unincorporated town called Marengo. There was a time when the Milwaukee Road shared common ground with the Union Pacific Railroad here. The two lines paralleled each other and they even shared a depot. Today, it's all but gone. However, you can still see trains here on the active Union Pacific line which crosses under the Milwaukee. Unfortunately, Marengo has another claim to fame, and not a good one. It was near this location on May 30, 1911 that a new passenger service on the Milwaukee called the Columbia was headed eastbound when it suddenly derailed and ditched on a sharp curve approximately here. The engineer and fireman were both killed in the wreck and several others were injured. Shortly following this accident, the Milwaukee regraded this curve. The original sharp curve is still visible from above. A casualty of time a fallen telegraph pole. Here we see a very short tunnel for the Union Pacific passing under the Milwaukee Road. 
On the way to our next stop, we find two signal boxes left behind and forgotten with their masts removed. They look out of place here in the quiet countryside with no tracks and no trains to guide. Their service long since ended. We're now coming up on one of the most dramatic sights on this journey west, as well as being one of the most isolated. Below two tall cliffs lies a stark green pasture filled with livestock and a small stream. This is Cow Creek, and it once supported a magnificent 100-foot trestle comprised of an incredible 27 spans measuring 1,400 feet across. The Milwaukee named it EE-164, and it was one of the most impressive structures on the Pacific Coast Extension. Unfortunately for rail fans, historians, and trail followers, the Cow Creek Trestle was demolished and subsequently scrapped shortly after the line was abandoned in 1980. There are mixed stories on how this came to be. Some say the landowner of Cow Creek wanted the trestle gone. Some say scrappers made a deal. Either way, the loss of this trestle is tremendous. This is what we see at Cow Creek today. And this is what once was. Rail inspector John Berger also captured this rare look atop Cow Creek Trestle on his way eastbound. All that remains now are the two rows of concrete supports lined up like headstones in a cemetery. For scale, I made my way down the steep cliffs for the chance to stand next to the two giant monoliths that once supported the trestle on the western side. Although the trestle is long gone, these giant blocks will likely remain forever. Continuing west past Cow Creek, the Milwaukee cuts through rocks and small canyons. We travel past active farmland and even see an abundance of telegraph poles still standing waiting for one last message. Cows and small animals can be seen here making homes in the quiet countryside. Just outside of Ralston, an amazing find. A westbound signal nearly all intact. The light itself is missing, but the rest is all there. This was the first complete signal I had seen and I found it mesmerizing. All of the other signals removed. Why was this one left behind? We may never know, but here it sits quietly, waiting for a train that will never come. Ralston, Washington, named for the Ralston Purina brand, is a small town in Adams County, actually plotted by the railroad in 1907. At its peak, Ralston had a population of around 200 and an assortment of businesses that called this place home. When the Milwaukee left, so did most of the town. There is little left here today that would suggest there was a population here with the exception of the grain elevator that now serves as a landmark. Virtually no trace of the Milwaukee can be found aside from the right-of-way, unless you know where to look. A circle of concrete blocks reveal the footprint of a water tower signal stands, the pump house, the only remaining structure, a lonely row of telegraph poles still line the right of way. If we continue chasing the line of telegraph poles, we'll find ourselves in Lind. To the east of town, the right of way has been bisected by Highway 395. 
There once was a bridge here which was removed when the highway was widened. Another loss. We're now back to where my involvement began. My inspiration for this whole documentary. The bridge here at Lind, also called the Lind Viaduct. From a distance, you can really see the scale of the bridge that once occupied this space. The Milwaukee designated it Bridge EE-194A. It was made up of 13 spans and reached 830 feet. Once again, the proud Milwaukee road spanned over another rail line. In this case, the Northern Pacific, now BNSF. The two arch pillars straddled the competing railroad. From what I understand, the bridge was damaged somehow and deemed a safety hazard shortly after abandonment, which prompted the town to have the bridge dismantled. The remains here are still eye-catching, just as it drew me in. The standing arches invoke a feeling of being surrounded by ancient ruins. There is something to be said about Milwaukee Road architecture. With so many examples of form and function, many of the bridges feature arch designs. When the Milwaukee built a bridge, it wasn't just a bridge. It was a beautiful work of art built to last. Concrete and steel together in one cohesive structure. Not just bridging a gap, but bridging time itself. The workers that built these structures are long gone, but what they left behind was made to last for generations. Twenty miles west of Lind, we come to our next stop, Warden. What makes Warden unique on the Milwaukee Road is that a section of the main line is still intact and still in use by a local line called the Columbia Basin Railroad. This section of active rail runs all the way to Royal City. The section of main line cuts off right before crossing First Street. Today, it's nearly impossible to see where the existing track connected with the main line. Over the past 40 years, nature has reclaimed this short section of the trail. But the rail ties give us a clue. Since we can't ride these rails, we head southwest toward the next major hub for the Milwaukee in Othello. Othello used to be a major hub for the Milwaukee Road's Pacific Coast Extension, not only having a depot, but also a roundhouse, turntable, maintenance shop, and more. Trains from the Columbia Basin Railroad still travel through here, but the Milwaukee Road has been all but wiped off the map. There are still a handful of unused rails half buried in the ground. A keen eye can still make out the barely visible foundations from the roundhouse, fittingly, just to the side of Railroad Avenue. The Milwaukee Road held the distinction of having the longest electrified railroad in America. Starting in 1917, the Milwaukee electrified two sections of the Pacific Coast Extension. It was necessary due to the difficulty steam engines were having generating steam in the mountainous areas. The first section was from Harlowton, Montana to Avery, Idaho, then from Othello to Tacoma. 
The combined mileage was nearly 650 miles of electrified line. The Milwaukee discontinued electrification in 1974. In an area known as Taunton, we arrive at the structural remains of Substation 21. Time has not been kind to this old powerhouse. The substation's twin 1500 volt DC generators long removed along with many of the building's inner workings. Once the beginning point of electrification in Washington State on the Milwaukee Road, now a mere shell left to the elements and vandals. Outside, the main tower still stands, reminding us this was no ordinary building. Rails and a track switch are still intact here, and they can be followed all the way to Royal City, 12 miles away. In Royal City, the track splits as the active branch line heads into town. The main line comes to an end as it disappears into the soil and grass. A closer inspection reveals manufacturing years still visible on the sides of the rails. This really is the end of the line, but our journey continues on. Our next stop finds us near the mighty Columbia River in the town of Beverly. In its day, the Milwaukee had a depot, several sets of tracks, and an oil tower here. The main attraction, however, is still here and was added to the National Historic Register in 1982. And rightfully so, the magnificent Beverly Bridge EE-266 is a truss and steel girder bridge half a mile in length and was completed in 1909. After the Milwaukee Road was abandoned in 1980, this beautiful historic bridge was closed off for safety. It hasn't seen a train in over 40 years.
After crossing the Columbia River, we begin our ascent up into the Saddle Mountains. For roughly the next 20 miles, we will travel some of the most open and desolate territory in the state. This part of the Milwaukee Road is part of Joint Base lewis mccord and is managed by the U.S. Army's Yakima Training Center. Here, it's extremely important to stay on the trail as this area is used for conducting live fire exercises by the U.S. Army. After checking in at the Army East Trailhead, we start the next 20-mile stretch. From the sky, not much stands out from the landscape save for the primitive roads winding their way through. This area is unrelenting. Very few traces of the past can be found here. But suddenly, we come across some unmistakable geometric shapes suggesting man-made remains. This is all that's left of Substation 22 and its three operator bungalows here in Doris, Washington. Historic photographs confirm the building's placements along with the electrical tower that once sat adjacent to the substation. It's four concrete pedestals left behind. About three quarters of the way across the Yakima Training Center grounds, we reach the highlight of the entire section, Boylston Tunnel. As we approach the tunnel, we can see nature has reclaimed the right of way as if a hundred years had passed since the time of trains. Water, mud, and trees have consumed the cut. Then, suddenly, out of the brush, like a lost temple, the eastern portal of Tunnel 45 emerges, its identity stamped in concrete for all time. This nearly 1,973-foot tunnel is technically closed from access, and a trail bypass has been set up, despite there being no barricades to prevent entry. Entering the darkness, the tunnel seems perfectly intact. An interesting find. A timber structure resembling a rib cage acts as a supplemental reinforcement to a portion of the tunnel. Moving further, we find the reason for the closed access. A large section of the tunnel's roof has collapsed, leaving a pile of rock on the ground. Near the western portal, we are greeted very differently from the other side. A massive pile of tumbleweeds has accumulated around the entrance and a good portion of the right-of-way. Like many other isolated areas, Boylston once had a depot way out here, but like many others, is also long gone. Reaching the Army West Trailhead, we approach another bridge here at Renslow. The Renslow Trestle, EE320, stands as a 678-foot-long, 12-span steel skeleton, having had its decking removed. We can still see the steel supports jetting out from the sides that once held the poles for the catenary wires. Today, Interstate 90 passes through the Phoenix columns of this Milwaukee Road structure, but the trestle itself actually predates the freeway by nearly 60 years. When Renslow Trestle was built in 1910, it merely crossed a sagebrush-covered valley floor 110 feet up. Today, thousands of vehicles cross under this bridge daily, having no idea of its historical significance. The 
classic Milwaukee Road configuration consisted of a depot, substation, and three bungalows for workers. Our next stop is no exception. The town of Kittitas has two of the three of these still standing. Right away we're greeted with the site of the Kittitas Depot. Although not open to the public, the depot has been preserved and proudly sporting Milwaukee Road colors. This eye-catching structure is one of very few Milwaukee Road depots left in Washington State. Kittitas is also the former home to Substation 23, whose foundation remains are still visible adjacent to the depot. The pump house on site has also been restored and painted in Milwaukee Road colors. The three bungalows have been maintained over the years and are now in the hands of private owners. Arriving in Ellensburg, we see the most dramatic change along the Milwaukee Road in all of Washington State. Where there was once an important section of right-of-way has been redeveloped and completely erased from the map. The majority of the main line was redeveloped for the campus expansion of Central Washington University, so at least it was for a good cause. Aerial views show us where the railroad used to run through town, and some landscape features still outline the angles of the line that once was here. The eastern end of the trail begins here, heading toward Kittitas, while the west end heads towards the rural outskirts of Ellensburg and into the small community of Thorpe. Today, there are no remains of the Milwaukee and Ellensburg, but from the air, we can connect the missing mile to the broken ends on either side of town. A couple of miles outside Ellensburg, we find two bridges intact, one that crosses U.S. Highway 10, and the other that crosses over an active rail line, then proceeds to connect to an original timber bridge. All of these structures are maintained and fully accessible on the Palouse to Cascade State Park Trail. There are a couple of poles left that once held catenary wires for the electric engines. Here is part of the timber pile bridge crossing Clock Road. You can see where there was once another cross beam in the center here that would have been necessary to support the weight of trains passing overhead. It seems that these timbers caught fire at some point, but fortunately were able to be saved. Our next brief stop brings us to the Twin Truss Bridge at Thorpe, visible from Interstate 90. Further into the hills along the Yakima River, we will pass through two sister tunnels also known as the Thorpe Tunnels or Horlick Tunnels. Tunnel 46, standing just 496 feet in length, bored through to accommodate the beautiful Yakima River landscape. Again, I imagine the lucky travelers that got to experience this amazing countryside way back when. Shortly after passing some abandoned farmhouses, we come up on Tunnel 47. twice as long as its sister tunnel at 1,239 feet long. Our next 
next location is the most preserved stop on the Milwaukee Road in the entire state of Washington. This is South Clay Ellum, and in its day was a bustling hub of activity, similar to what used to be back in Malden, but much more. This yard was filled with multiple rail lines, a turntable, a roundhouse, water tower, bungalows, a substation, a boarding house, and of course, a depot. We are very fortunate to have many of these historic structures still intact. The depot was fully restored in 2006 and now houses both a Milwaukee Road exhibit and a restaurant called Smokey's Barbecue. The depot is serving people once again, just in a different way. Substation 24 sits next to the depot, empty but intact. A walking tour around the yard reveals much about its busy past. The supports for the water tower. The massive turntable. The foundations of the roundhouse are part of the landscape now. Like Kittitas, the three bungalows are now in the hands of private owners. Another highlight here is the Milwaukee Road Caboose 1988, currently awaiting interior restoration. On the other side of the yard are more treasures. The former bunkhouse now enjoys a new life as the Iron Horse Inn Bed and Breakfast. And what stay on the Milwaukee Road would be complete without staying in a real caboose that's been beautifully refurbished. There is so much to see and experience here in this one stop. Just outside of Clay Ellum, we get a peek at Bridge FF2 over the Yakima River, which was the site of a 14-car derailment and subsequent fire which damaged part of this bridge back in 1977. This next location is unique as there are three bridges running parallel over the Yakima River. This time, we have a Milwaukee Road bridge next to an active BNSF line, and next to both of those is Interstate 90. The two steel railroad bridges are nearly identical and appear to be built around the same time. This bridge feels similar to the steel bridge way out in Seabury that we saw earlier, but this one has the advantage of being closer to civilization and therefore is much better maintained. Flying over Lake Easton to get a peek at our next location. Tucked away in the forest, invisible from outside the trail, is Tunnel 48, or Easton Tunnel. This is the shortest Milwaukee Road Tunnel in Washington, measuring out at just 203 feet long. Hidden deep in the forest among the high power lines and four-wheel drive territory is Tunnel 49, also known as Whittier Tunnel. This one is also relatively short at just 527 feet. This one is bored right through a hillside allowing the forest to still thrive many feet above. Unless you are actually traveling the Milwaukee Road, this is not an easy tunnel to reach. 
Satellite views alone assisted me in reaching this elusive Milwaukee structure. Emerging from the forest alongside Lake Kichelis, it was near here that two long snowsheds once stood. These were used to keep trains safe from avalanche, which were a frequent event during the brutal winters. Unfortunately, these snowsheds were dismantled after the 1980 abandonment. As we start to really climb up into the Cascade Mountains, we reach one of the crown jewels of the Pacific Coast Extension, the Snoqualmie Pass Tunnel. Snoqualmie Tunnel, or Tunnel 50, measures an astounding 11,890 feet long, or 2.3 miles. This tunnel was constructed as a shortcut to an original section of mainline which provided a better grade overall. It took two years from 1912 to 1914 to complete and officially opened for trains in 1915. This is a very popular destination for joggers and cyclists. Traversing the two-mile tunnel definitely takes some time on foot. Two gigantic wooden doors adorn the eastern portal inviting curious travelers inside. The atmosphere inside feels much closer to being inside a cave. It's damp, cold, and eerie. Because the tunnel is slightly curved, you can't see the other end. It is obviously pitch black unless you have a very bright light source. As you travel through, you can almost feel the history inside. If you're paying attention, you can still spot some remnants of the tunnel's former life, which outspanned its existence as part of a trail. Several signal boxes remain in small alcoves in the walls. A keen eye will also spot cables, connectors, and wall anchors, which are left over from the tunnel's former electrification. After a long trek through Tunnel 50, the light at the end is finally visible. Outside, a surprise awaits those that have never been here. The western entrance has twin portals. There is some debate on its purpose. Some say it was meant for expansion, while others say it doubled as a snowshed or to help prevent erosion. Either way, the second western portal stands as a reminder that the Milwaukee Road had planned for a successful future. And for the most part, that was true. While traveling west through Snoqualmie Tunnel, we've actually been going deep into the Cascade Mountains. As we continue west, the elevation will remain high for some time now. After running parallel to Interstate 90, the Milwaukee Road turns deeper into the mountains and returns to the forest once again. The trail begins to feel like a logging road as nature has enclosed both sides of the right of way. An occasional telegraph pole barely clinging to the soil reminds us that this is still the Milwaukee Road. Suddenly, a shack-like structure comes into view. The trail also splits here. One goes to the structure, while another bypasses it. This is the only Milwaukee snow shed to still exist in Washington. This shed is believed to be at least partially reconstructed after the abandonment. The original shed that stood in this location was much bigger. This served to protect trains from any avalanche coming down the hillside. We now enter an area called Garcia that once had a depot and water tower and is now a trailhead for the Palouse Cascade State Park Trail. This serves as a convenient access point that's relatively close to the interstate. It's here we get our first close-up look at several high trestles that have actually been accessible for some time as part of the Iron Horse Trail. Every so often, small reminders of the trail's railroad past stand out amongst the forest path. They now seem foreign to the landscape after decades of being forgotten. This is Mine Creek Trestle, Milwaukee Road Bridge FF106. This curved trestle gives us a look at what Renslow and Tico would look like intact. A distinctive feature of these trestles in the Cascades is that the steel supports for both the catenary and telegraph lines were left intact.
Here, we find more remnants removed and discarded. Pieces of the original concrete decking, like the ones we saw at Renslow, slowly being consumed by the earth. Another high bridge, Hole Creek Trestle FF-108. This particular trestle has a slightly different history than its sister trestles. In 1988, less than 10 years after abandonment, clear-cutting followed by a severe storm caused a flash flood sending a 30-foot wall of mud and timber crashing into the middle supports for this trestle. It ended up taking 171 feet of the bridge with it. It would take another 10 years for Washington State Parks to secure the funding to bridge the gap left by the storm. Today, you can still spot where there's a mismatch from the original construction on either side to the very modern-looking center section. Our next stop is a wide spot in the road, literally. This is Ragnar, and while it once had a depot, there doesn't seem to be much more information floating around about it. However, it's worth noting that at some point after the Milwaukee Road was dismantled, many signals, railroad ties, and other materials found their way here to Ragnar. It seems like a small junkyard of sorts. A short walk from Ragnar is the Boatsky Creek Trestle. This bridge is likely one of the shortest tall trestles in the state. This bridge is nicely tucked away in the forest, and unlike some of the others we saw, this one is not visible from the freeway. Decades before nature took its course, these amazing displays of engineering were in full view when the route was first cleared for the Milwaukee Road. Emerging from the Cascade Mountains, we arrive at a crucial junction, Cedar Falls. Like other stops on the Milwaukee, Cedar Falls also once had a depot. Interestingly, that depot was not only saved from demolition, but disassembled, moved, and reassembled as part of a private residence somewhere in King County, Washington. This is where the Palooza Cascade State Park Trail officially ends, and the Cedar River Trail begins. This is also the final stretch for the main line right of way for the Milwaukee Road. Cedar River Trail access begins in Maple Valley from Landsberg Road where it makes its way through the forest on its way to Tacoma. From here, the Milwaukee Road changes drastically. This section is heavily traveled by pedestrians and cyclists. It is very well maintained and eventually turns from gravel to paved blacktop. There are multiple steel truss bridges over the Cedar River as the trail crisscrosses its way west. With the exception of the bridges, all other traces of the Milwaukee Road seem to have vanished from here. In Renton, approximately 15 miles from the trail access in Maple Valley, the Cedar River Trail comes to an end. The Milwaukee Road once merged here. Now, completely severed from the active rail line. The trail goes cold. All but lost to four decades of progress. While the main line has virtually been erased and or integrated into the existing rail line, there are some remaining Milwaukee Road structures of note if you know where to look. Substation 27 still stands at 450 Shattuck Avenue in Renton. The building has been added onto, structurally reinforced, and the interior completely remodeled. It now stands as an office building appropriately named the Old Milwaukee Substation. Although the building itself has undergone a facelift, it still retains the original Substation 27 identification in the front. At last, we've chased the Milwaukee to our final stop, Tacoma. 
Here there are two structures, one original and one modern. An original Milwaukee Road freight house still stands and is currently housing some local vendors under the name of Freight House Square. The modern structure is the current trestle used by Sound Transit, which utilizes some of the old Milwaukee Road right-of-way. The century-old S-curve trestle, or bridge FF282, supported rail service even after the Milwaukee was gone. Although historians and rail fans supported the preservation of this historic trestle, it just wasn't built to sustain the demands of commuter rail service. In 2017, the historic S-curve trestle was demolished after serving Tacoma for over 100 years. However, the builders of this new trestle didn't tear down a piece of history without acknowledging its significance. A bright new Milwaukee Road placard adorns the new structure bearing the inscription, Pacific Coast Extension, 1909-1980. The Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul and Pacific Railroad's Pacific Coast Extension operated for 70 years. When it was abandoned in 1980, it was the single largest railroad abandonment in U.S. history. Tracks were subsequently lifted from Miles City, Montana all the way west. Although the Milwaukee is gone, most of its road and many of its amazing structures still remain, a testament to those who braved all to leave their mark for generations, carving a legacy in steel and stone. The forward thinking of those who saw the potential this land still had has allowed thousands to enjoy this beautiful route once carved out by the mighty Milwaukee. Its existence continues to fascinate and captivate the imaginations of many, just as it's done for myself. For Nowhere Video Productions, I'm Todd Hilton. Thank you for joining me on this amazing journey.